Alright, people asked for it, so here it is. My Herald build for hunting rifts. Rather than giving an exact build, I'll be doing two things. I'll give you the base template, which is actually a build that you can take into instance content as either a power DPS or power quickness DPS, and the modifications you might want to make based on your own needs. If this is your first time modifying a build, don't worry, I'll explain exactly which modifications to make under which circumstances. Thanks to the new weapon mastery system, we can equip elite spec weapons on all specializations, which has given a massive boost to power revenant builds. Our main weapon will be a great sword, and even though it's not that great on a power build, we'll be taking shortbow in our second set. If you take this into dungeons, raids or strikes, go with a staff instead of a shortbow. Most of the time will be spent on great swords, and the only times I switch to shortbow is for easy tagging when DPS doesn't matter, or in Corteria where every mob basically dies after you use shortbow 2 or 3. Before we get to the actual gear stats, let's first take a look at our trait lines. We'll go with Invocation, which will grant you various benefits when you're under the effect of Fury. Our minor traits will grant us Fury whenever we invoke a legend or disable a foe, and grant us a 10% damage bonus when under the effects of Fury. In the base version of this build, we want Rising Tides to increase our strike damage by 10% while our health is above 75%, Incensed Response which grants us 5 stacks of might every time we grant ourselves Fury, and Roiling Mists which increases our crit chance by 25% while we're under the effects of Fury. If you're struggling against conditions, change the first trait to Cleansing Channel instead. This will remove a condition every time you swap legends. Our next trait line will be Devastation, which is all about dealing big damage. The minor traits will let us inflict vulnerability, which increases our damage against enemies and grants us a 0.5% damage boost for every stack currently on our enemy, as well as a 5% flat damage increase. In the base template, we'll go with Unsuspecting Strikes as our first trait, which lets us deal 20% increased damage to enemies that are above 80% HP. And Swift Termination will be our third trait, which lets us deal 20% increased damage to enemies under 50% HP. Our middle trait will be Notoriety, which increases the power we get from Might, but lets us deal lower condition damage instead. Now, if you're struggling and often spending time on low HP, you want to change the second and third trait to the bottom ones. This will decrease your damage but grant you battle scars for simply being in combat as well as when applying vulnerability. And battle scars are a revenant only mechanic which lets you steal health from enemies while in combat. I would not run battle scars in instance content, but if you spend most of your time in the open world, you might actually want this as your standard option. This brings us to our elite spec. And I went with Herald. Both Renegade and especially Vindicator are solid open world options, but there's some quality of life to Heralds that is very hard for me to pass up. Our minor traits will let us deal increased strike damage and grant us increased concentration for each boon we currently have. On top of that, we're also getting a 10% HP bonus. For the major traits, you'll want Rising Momentum, which will increase your movement speed for every point of upkeep in use. These are the infamous energy pips Revenants use as a resource. The more energy drain you have, the faster you'll be running around. Our second trait is Shared Empowerment, which lets us apply Might whenever we apply a boon. The tooltip specifies that this is to allies, but this includes you as well. And our final trait is Elevated Compassion, which will heal us and grant us quickness whenever we have at least 6 points of upkeep active. You could significantly increase your damage by changing the last trait to Forceful Persistence, but you'll be giving up on your quickness. You can mitigate this by getting the End of Dragon buffs from the protocols if you're an open world player, but I'm often a bit lazy and I don't always get those for myself. If you're hunting for rifts, currently it's very likely that you won't be hunting alone, so the extra quickness can also benefit the people around you. With that out of the way, it's time to look at our gear. The base build uses full berserker gear except for a dragon backpack, dragon hunter runes and a relic of the thief. Your weapons should each have a sigil of force and air. If you only have a single set of gear, stick with this setup as you can take this into instance content as well as use it in the open world. And if you're struggling in the open world, change your traits to the more survivability focused ones that I suggested earlier on. If you have the luxury of having multiple gear sets, you can build in more survivability in your open world set. Marauder gear is your typical open world set that gives you more survivability. But if you have a legendary set, I suggest to at least try out commanders instead. 
I've been rocking Commander's gear for a bit on this build now, and I'm actually pretty happy with the results. I'm also planning on testing out Crusader as well, so I might update this video in the future. It's very important to note to only get Commander's gear if you have legendary armor, because the cost is not worth the setup if you need to craft each piece individually. The same advice goes for your runes. If you only have one set, stick to my original suggestion so that this can double as a build for dungeons, raids and strikes. If you're only playing in the open world, or you have multiple sets, it's worth building in some survivability once more. In the footage, I'm running with Runes of the Herald, mainly because I'm trying to reach a very high boon duration to buff other players when hunting rifts. A more sensible option in case you're playing solo would be Runes of the Holosmith. There are also a few fun options for your relics in the open world. If you need condition cleansing, you can take Relic of the Water. And if you need extra stability, take the Relic of the Centaur. Both will activate on using a healing skill. If you need neither, I suggest you try out the Relic of the Wizard's Tower. Every time you use an elite skill, you will shield yourself with a projectile reflecting barrier while summoning a wave that will pull enemies towards you. Now that you know what traits to pick when and what gear to use, let's take a look at how you want to play this build. Some of the most important traits only activate on having at least 6 points of upkeep or rather having one arrow on the left side of your energy active. I am currently running with Glint and Shiro in this video, but if you need more survivability, swap Shiro to Jalis. When you're invoking Glint, the way to get to those 6 pips of upkeep is by activating your healing skill as well as your 3 utility skills. To keep things simple, you can also activate your elite skill and instantly consume it. It does deal a fair bit of damage. Before you swap out of Glint, it's fine to consume all of your skills except for the healing skill. I would only suggest you consume that one if you actually need the healing. Glint heal is an incredibly strong one by the way. It only heals for a small amount of health, but converts all incoming damage to healing for 3 seconds. The reason we don't always consume the healing skill is because of its longer cooldown. If this skill is on cooldown when you swap back to Glint, you can activate Facet of Nature on top of the utility skills to make sure you have those 6 pips of upkeep running. When going into Shiro, you will only need to activate Impossible Odds, or if you're running Jalis, you want to activate Vengeful Hammers instead. I'll link the base version of the build in the pinned comments. As mentioned, you can take this to both instance content and use it in the open world. If you're playing in the open worlds, but you don't have a second set of gear, I suggest you only adapt the traits to the more survivable ones that I suggested based on how difficult you find the content. If you have the luxury of owning multiple gear sets, or you have legendary gear, go nuts and experiment with the stats as well. If you have any other comments or questions, leave them down below and it'd really help me out if you could hit the like and subscribe buttons.